Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Vivian from the Paper Letter Blog and today we're going to make a little flower peekaboo card. So yeah, first of all, of course, it's my face on the camera, but you're probably more interested in what is behind my face, which is my craft room. I I'm not fully ready for like a craft room tour yet. As you can see, it's also kind of messy. That's also because I craft and when I craft, I make a mess. So I'm in between still kind of organizing my craft room and making more mess. So that doesn't really help. Um, so I'm not going to do like a full craft room tour yet. That might still be a while, but I did want to come on here and say hello, show you a little sneak peek of the craft room, <laughs> of course, um, because I am very, very happy here. Usually when I show my face on camera, I am <laughs> in my pajamas, uh, sporting a messy bun, but today I actually feel very fancy. I went to a kind of special hair dresser in Breda who specializes in like vegan, natural kind of treatments because I have very dry scalp. So they had like a dry scalp detox treatment. I decided to treat myself to that. I felt so fancy. Uh, this lady gave me this really nice loose leaf green tea with fennel and a nice anise or something. And then afterwards she did like the blow drying and the styling on my hair. <laughs> and I felt so fancy. I thought, I thought for once I'm going to do a face to camera chat where I actually look kind of together and I don't know my hair never looks this nice I just want to do to come on camera and show you I don't know don't ask me oh and also of course I like my channel um, for being personal I like the face to camera chat so that you guys also know who is behind this channel <laughs> with all of the chit chat aside I'm going to start explaining my project for today because Sunday, when I'm filming this, Sunday is Mother's Day. It's different in all countries, so please don't uh, don't get stressed. Maybe it's not the same in your country, but Sunday is Mother's Day here in the Netherlands. And I'm not going to see my mom on Sunday, or at least we have no plans to go see them. I saw them Tuesday. <laughs> and um, I don't know about other, can other countries, but here it's kind of a tradition to give your mom flowers on Mother's Day, I don't know, just a nice bouquet of flowers, but since I'm not going to see her, I thought it would be kind of lame if I sent over a bouquet, but I thought instead I can make her like a paper bouquet, like send her a nice postcard with flowers or something on them. So that got my thought process going. I started thinking about ways I could do flowers and I also have been kind of getting into mixed media lately. So I thought I would incorporate that somehow. And then I got to thinking about this video I watched a little while ago from Paige Taylor Evans. You may know Paige Taylor Evans. She's the creator or the, the designer, I guess, of all of my favorite paper pads. She has these really fun collections and she also does videos so a few days ago she uploaded this video like for like a thank you card and i think she called it a peekaboo card or something like that i really that really stuck in the back of my head and she did this idea for making a peekaboo card um with the words thank you i think and i'm not going to do that but i was i i did that idea of a peekaboo card stuck in the back of my head so what I'm going to do today is kind of a spin on her idea for a peekaboo card. I'm going to make it my own. I'm going to make mixed media flowers. And I think if it's going to be anything like what I'm seeing in my head now, what I'm, what's on my vision board, I think it will be really, really cool. But I just wanted to clarify and kind of point out that the original inspiration for this was from her channel. I will also link that video down below if you want to check it out. I think it's a really cool idea. And I'm going to see what I can do with that. Mm. Is there anything else I can tell you? I don't think so. I'm currently waiting for my nail polish to dry because I'm impatient. I was waiting for my nail polish to dry and then I had to change the battery of my camera and I messed up my nail polish. So mm. I'm just going to sit here, 
sip some of my tea, wait for my nail polish to dry, and then we're going to get started on this video. Guys, I hope you're all doing amazing. I hope your hair looks as fabulous as mine looks today. I also want to ask you that if you're as if you're watching these videos, if you enjoy my channel, if you're excited about happy mail and um, mail in general videos, please give this video a thumbs up so I will know you enjoy it and I will know to make many, many more of these. <laughs> okay, voiceover time. I'm nice and late again with this video, but this time it's actually because I finished this project this morning and I was so excited to share this with you. I thought I would try and upload it right away. So it's actually for a good reason that I'm late now. So what I'm doing is I have that easy clean mat, which is honestly the best thing I have ever bought. Um, I did link all of the supplies I used in the description box down below, but I'm not saying it because of that. I'm saying it because I'm honestly a messy person and this has helped me so much. So this is also my first time trying this out on this mat, but it actually works quite well if you don't have a craft mat or I don't know place mat or something like that you can also use like plastic packaging instead something that you would usually throw away so what I do is I press the distress oxides down onto the mat to get a little bit of that ink out then I spray some drops of water on top of that excuse my phone and then I press the paper onto the ink or I kind of swipe the paper across the ink so that I pick up all of the colors and this creates a really cool effect. And now I'm going to add some purple, which I did not actually like on this, in this color combo. For some reason, I like all of the combinations together, but the purple turns kind of like brownish. So I'm doing two different sheets. One of them is a mixed media paper that I've had for a while. And the other one is just regular printing paper, but it's I think it's 200 grams paper, so it's a bit thicker than usual um, because I am going to do something with it afterwards and I did not know which would work best. So distress oxide, uh, put some water on top and then just layer that on top of the paper. This is a distress oxide re-inker because I wanted to get that color so badly. It's such a pretty purple, but um, they did not have the actual Distress Oxide ink pad. So I just bought the re-inker. That was me checking if my camera was still on. And like I said, if you don't have Distress Oxide, you can also use something else, which is Tombow pens, or I think it would work with regular pens as well, um, like markers, I think. I have no clue because you need a lot of ink in there. You do the same thing. You kind of color onto the onto plastic or something and then you spritz it with water and then you swipe the paper across so if you have and what i also did in the beginning is i did a little bit of water coloring with that so use markers if you don't have also with me at, in the beginning i only had four colors of distress oxides and i would also use markers to get the same effect so that i had some more colors to work with so yeah, it's going quite quickly, but I layered all of the dyes I wanted to use on top of that paper and I'm now just taking all of them out. This is the regular paper, the printing paper, so this goes quite easily, but um, the other paper was a bit more difficult. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, what I'm going to drink is some hot chocolate mix I got from Louisa in her latest uh, PO box package. Thank you so much. It's really, really good. Um, but I'm... What I'm doing is I'm basically putting the dyes onto the prettiest pieces of paper and this actually has really good memories for me because I used to be in group therapy, I've said that a couple times, I used to be in group therapy and we also had creative therapy once a week and we would very often um, get one of those huge paper rolls and then we would cover the entire table in paper. These are just the flowers I ended up cutting out, some of them, I'm going to make many many more. Um, and then we would cover the tables in paper, so we would have like this huge canvas we could work on. And then all of us would work on the table together, we would either have our own space or we would go, we would be walking around the table and I cannot really explain quickly enough how that would turn into therapy, but it did. And then at the end of um, those sessions, we would always 
get to pick one piece of the table that we wanted to save. So we would cut out a square or a circle or we would tear a piece off of the paper and then we would put that in our therapy uh, folder and I still have all of them and I've actually had all of them rolled up into one big roll um, and I haven't unrolled that since I quit therapy but I'm actually really excited to uh, pick that up again and to see all of the pieces of pretty paper that I ended up saving because as weird as it may sound, um, when I looked through all of them on my last day of therapy, I actually recognized which sessions each paper was from. And a little bit of background noise. And um, we wouldn't actually draw anything. Usually it would be kind of the same as this, just mixing different colors and making, I don't know, circles and stripes and nothing really in particular, but still just because of the, the combination of colors, I would be able to recognize the therapy sessions. So I actually thought of doing this for a video and I was wondering if you guys would be interested. It's not actually art, it's probably just lots of random pieces of paper, but I'm actually kind of excited to see what is in that um, folder from my group therapy. But okay, that was just a little sidestep there. Um, so far I have made the flowers and I have made some leaves. Or actually I've made the paper that I want to turn into the leaves, which is green of course. And now I'm using a circle spin and trim. I'll try to find that and see if I can uh, link that down below. I have to hurry up though. I, and I use that to cut out a circle in the middle of my card. And now I'm, I'm, I'm going to mess up first because I wanna make kind of a frame around that circle. And I mess up because of course, what I should have done is cut out the outer, no, the inner circle first and then the outer circle. I'm doing that now. But I tried the other way around, which obviously doesn't work. So I have my uh, outer circle, uh, just because I thought, I don't know, that would look nice, like kind of like a picture frame. And now I'm going to use another Distress Oxide. I think this color is called Shabby Shutters. Again, I will link all of the colors I use down below <laughs> if you wanna check them out. This is Shabby Shutters, if I'm not mistaken, and I use that to give the frame a color as well. And here, I'm sorry about the, the way I filmed this. I didn't actually realize yesterday that my camera was kind of in a wrong, <laughs> in the wrong uh, angle. So I hope it's okay nonetheless. And what I'm doing now, obviously, is I am creating a kind of a, uh, layout, I guess, a layout. And I'm doing two things. I am using that needle bottle, needle glue bottle. That's just regular tacky glue that I put in a little needle bottle. You can buy them loose and then you can put your own tacky glue in there. I'm gluing down some pieces because, for example, those leaves, they are way too thin and tiny to use uh, foam tape that like you would be able to see the foam tape that's not pretty so I'm, I'm gluing down the most thin pieces and then I'm using foam tape behind the thicker ones and this was today you can see my sweater changed <laughs> and I picked out a tea that I got from one of you guys I picked out lemon meringue pie I think wow I'm sorry I didn't finish it because that was a little bit of weird flavor and I wanted to do some more, um, put some more flowers on it, but I was also afraid of making it too much. So I'm just trying to see what works. And I am putting the entire uh, frame, basically all of the flowers, all of the leaves, I'm putting that on a separate piece of paper that I can just move around and see how I like it best. Um, yeah, and I'm just trimming off the excess. I did not actually know how I was going to do this. I kind of forgot how Paige did that, but I, in the end I decided to use that foam tape again. By the way, if you cannot find foam tape in your craft uh, supply area, look in the Home Depot, like the Home Supply area, because this is actually uh, foam tape that you would use for home improvement. I have no idea how that would work, but yeah. 
for putting up mirrors, I think, but it's really cheap. So I used firm type and then I used regular double-sided type and I had no clue like how I was going to do that. So I'm kind of working as I go. Um, so because I was afraid if I put foam tape all around it that the page would be too fat and that wouldn't work. And in the end I picked out that six by six Winnie the Pooh paper and it doesn't match my card at all. It's really random. But my mom loves Winnie the Pooh, so I had to. Actually, my mom's official name is Winnie. Her name is Wendy now, she changed it, but her official name is Winnie, so you know, I had to pick that Winnie the Pooh paper. So it's kind of like a personal touch, like an inside joke for us. <laughs> and then I didn't like, I wanted more flowers without too much, so I ended up uh, putting two more, I think, in there. And then I'm carefully gluing down the ring. If you watched carefully, I actually put glue on the wrong side at one. So yeah, that is the peekaboo part. I put that sticker. I love tiny word stickers. I want to find more of them. I put that word sticker that says, because I love you. And then I wrote mama, which is mom in Dutch. And I'm now I'm going to add some more touches with those Nouveau Vintage Drops. And they dry uh, matte, which is really cool. And now we have a bit of sunlight on my uh, table. I hope that's not too annoying, but my craft room has tons of sunlight in the morning, which is so nice, just not for filming. So this is the end result. I quickly ran to the mailbox today after we brought news to the vet. <laughs> She was not happy, let me tell you that. The T-O-O -O did not like. So that's my, uh, <laughs> that's me telling you I didn't like the tea. Sorry, but it's nice to try something else every once in a while. So I ran to the mailbox because I wanted it to be delivered to my mom um, before Mother's Day. So I really hope it arrives tomorrow. I of course wrote a tiny message in there just basically saying, I love you mom, because my mom is the best. <laughs> A little appreciation to my mom here um, yeah I don't know um, that was actually it for this video it's a little bit messy because I tried to tell you a lot and I also tried to tell you my process um, but I hope you liked it nonetheless I hope you enjoyed this I am in love with the end result this is probably my favorite card I've ever made. I know it was a little bit different because I don't usually do card making tutorials, but of course you could also use this as the front of a flip book. If you don't have any of the fancy tools like the die cutting machine or the distress oxides I have, don't be intimidated because there are tons of ways you can recreate this. Just uh, use your creativity. I really hope you liked it and let me know in the comment down below if you've sent your mom a, a Mother's Day card or if you've planned on something else or if it's maybe not your thing at all. And I will see you guys in the next video. <laughs> Enjoy the weekend and I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.